All right, we're gonna get started. Hey, everybody. I know everybody was in here. my wife watching. <laughs> you don't wanna be on camera tonight. Uh, but my name is Rob uh, Gilmore. I graduated in 07, 09, now working in admissions. Uh, pleasure to have you guys here with us tonight. I uh, hope you're all doing well, first of all. Hope you're uh, staying safe. And uh, hopefully we're gonna get to see you all on campus pretty soon. We know that uh, it's a stressful time for everybody. That's why we're making drinks tonight. Take away some of that stress and make some drinks. Uh, I know most of you in college, we're not drinking at the level that we're going to be making tonight. Uh, but uh, hopefully uh, you have some of these ingredients lying around. You can join in with me uh, and uh, have a little fun as we go. So we're going to make three different drinks tonight. Um, each drink is kind of different and can be used in different areas of entertaining or drinking or meals. Um, the first thing that we're going to start off is knowing what kind of drinks you want to make for what occasions. And there's all different kinds of drinks. There is uh, sweet drinks, there's bitter drinks. You have to figure out what's good for you and what's good for the people that you're serving. Uh, and always be generous with your drinks. And that's what we're going to do tonight. So the first thing we're going to do is the blueberry lemonade fizz. All right, this is a, a drink I actually came with a, up a couple years ago. Uh, and actually, I'm going to turn my Alexa off. I was going to do music, but I can't hear myself talk. Alexa off. All right. So uh, the blueberry lemonade fizz. This is a really good summer drink uh, because it's refreshing. Uh, and when you think of lemonade, you're thinking about using uh, country time. You're going to make the powder, put it in the water. But we're going to actually make our own lemonade for this. And depending on how you like, how sweet you like your lemonade, it's going to be how sweet you want to do this drink. So the first thing that we're gonna do is um, make a simple syrup, all right? Because you need to make the sweetness for the uh, lemonade. So to make a simple syrup, it's uh, equal parts sugar and equal parts water. So I'm making it really for one, I used a quarter cup of sugar and a quarter cup of water. You're going to put that into a saucepan, all right? And you're gonna put it on the stove at medium heat until it starts to steam. You're gonna stir it until all the sugar dissolves, take it off the heat, and then let it sit for about 15 minutes. Usually you can put it in the fridge for like five minutes, that's fine. And it's gonna come out, it's gonna look like water, but it's actually sugar water, so it's really, really sweet. So that's the base of this drink, all right? So there's gonna be a little bit of um, work into this. The second thing we need to do is we need to squeeze our lemons, all right? So I'm using uh, lemons and then I have a strainer I don't know if you can see that. I have a strainer over a bowl because you don't want any of the seeds in here. And I'm going to use the juice of two lemons, okay? So you're going to squeeze right into the bowl. Make sure you get all of the seeds out. Don't get rid of the um, lemons yet because you want to keep some of that, all right? So the juice of two whole lemons, right in there, and then you can see all the seeds that came out. So we have a good amount of lemonade, uh, lemons in there. The next thing we're gonna do, because you want a lot of lemon flavor when making this, we are gonna use the zest of a lemon, all right? So you're gonna take the zester I have right here, you're gonna take the lemon, and you're just gonna go over, back and forth, and you're gonna get some of the zest of the lemon there. That's gonna really add a lot of flavor to this. It's gonna add a lot of lemon flavor. And I'm also just gonna add a little bit of a zest of a lime too, because that's gonna give it a little bit more citrus. That's the lime falls on the ground. <laughs> add a little bit more citrus flavor, that's that. So you have in this bowl, the juice of two lemons, uh, zest of lemons, zest of lime. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to put in um, our blueberries. So this is where the blueberry comes from. And I use probably about a quarter cup of blueberries. It turns out to be like 20 blueberries, uh, but you could do less if you want, if you don't like that much blueberries. I prefer blueberries. And what we're gonna do is a thing called muddling. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna crush the blueberries and we wanna kind of bring those juices out. So I'm using the, um, the end of a spatula. You can use a glass if you want, but we're going to muddle these all down so that they break apart and get the juices out of them. And it kind of will turn 
uh, the liquid that we made uh, purplish. All right, so trust me, if you make these drinks for anybody, they're going to be so impressed that you can do it. So I have my muddles, blueberries. All right, that is, I'll do it like right there. So that's what they kind of look like. So that's your blueberry and your um, lemon mix. And now we're going to add in a little bit of the simple syrup. Okay, and that's going to be the base. Stir that up. And now we're going to make the drink. So I'm going to use a high glass for this. All right, nice tall glass, something refreshing. Okay, we're going to fill this up with ice. About halfway. Ice in drinks is always important. Uh, never skip. Now, for this one, you can use any kind of clear alcohol that you want. If you want to use vodka, you can use this. If you want to use white rum, you can use that, or you can use tequila. It either goes either way. Now, many people say if you use tequila, well, then you're making a margarita. Not true. Uh, but I am going to use tequila here uh, because I'm going to make vodka uh, with other drinks. So I am going to use tequila. And we're going to put about an ounce and a half in. If you don't have a, a shot glass, a shot glass is an ounce. You just pour it in there and then pour it into the drink. Uh, if you don't have that, you have a solo cup. Um, you could fill up to the bottom line of the solo cup. That's an ounce, All right? But I'm going to eyeball this here. All right, we're going to add in an ounce of tequila. We're going to add in our mixture that we made in the glass here. And then we're going to top it off with club soda. All right, and then we're just going to mix it up. And by mixing up, you're going to get those blueberries to move around. And because this is lemonade, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little piece of the lemon that we had, that we did the juice from, all right, and we're going to make a slit on the top here and put that right on the glass like that. And that is mm -hmm. your blueberry lemonade fizz. And that is pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. That's a refreshing. That's a nice summer drink on a nice summer day. Like I said, if you want to use any kind of uh, tequila for that, feel free to. I forgot to open the chat in case people are asking questions. My wife is telling me to do things here. All right. You want to see the action. So you're not going to see my face anymore. I have to listen to what my wife says. <laughs> I'm going to drink this again because this is actually really good. All right, awesome. Okay, next drink that we're going to make uh, is the Aperol Spritz. Now, this was a drink that was really good last summer. This was really huge last summer. Aperol found its way over from Italy. It's a bitter style drink. It's very orangey. So this is going to have a lot of orange undertones to it. First thing I'm going to start with is a wine glass. This is a giant wine glass. I love it because it makes really good drinks. People are impressed by it. Now I'm going to fill this um, about halfway with ice. One of the things that makes this drink so good is that it is versatile in how you want it to taste. If you want it to be sweet, you're going to add more Prosecco to it. If you want it to be a little bit more bitter, you're going to add a little bit more um, Aperol. I'm going to do a 50-50 split here. So I'm going to take the glass, and I'm going to add two ounces of Aperol to this. All right? All right, that's about two ounces right there. And then you're going to use Prosecco. Don't use champagne for this. I know people say champagne and Prosecco are the same thing. They aren't the same thing. They're very different in taste. Um, Prosecco is a lot sweeter than champagne, so this is why this is helpful. It's hard. You're going to use uh, Prosecco, and you're going to put two ounces of it. Right. So equal parts Prosecco, equal parts um, Aperol. Okay? And then the last thing you're going to do is you're going to put in uh, double that of club soda. Okay? 
We're gonna stir that around real quick. And then this is the real cool thing. So you're gonna take an orange, all right? And I'm gonna take, I'm gonna cut this, slice this down so I get a perfect orange slice. Like this, all right, perfect orange slice, just like that. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut it on one side to the middle. Don't cut it all the way through, cut it on one side. And then you're gonna put it right on the glass like that. All right, so that is the Aperol Spritz, okay? That is a pretty looking drink. It's supposed to replicate the Italian sunset, and I think this do definitely does. Taste it out. Oh, that is delish. That is good, good, good. All right, so uh, before we get into uh, the last drink, I am going to show you a couple different tricks here. Uh, first of all, um, if you want to make an elevated kind of um, nice cocktail, nuanced cocktail, one of the big things that uh, you can do is by adding some herbs into it. Um, like, for instance, we made the Blueberry lemonade fizz. Uh, this would actually be something really good if you wanted to put in chopped up basil or chopped up mint into here as well. That's going to add an extra layer, a layer of flavor to it. But that's definitely an option to do. The Aperol spritz you have to leave alone. You're not going to add anything into that. Uh, that is what it is. Um, the other thing is try different styles of alcohol. You know, try something you haven't done before. One of the things that is really cool about making drinks is that you can experiment with a recipe and try something to fit your taste. One of the things that a lot of people are nervous about when they're using alcohol is grain alcohol because it's just basically just alcohol, rubbing alcohol. But you can actually add a lot of things to grain alcohol because it doesn't have any taste. So, you know, it's not going to be that. Other thing is that you can add different styles of vodkas. So, you know, we were making blueberry fizz. And I use hey, tequila, but if you want to use like a flavored kind of vodka, like this one we have is cucumber mint, this would definitely taste really good in that because it would add to be more refreshing. Uh, so, you know, try to go above and beyond with your normal choices of what you'd like to drink uh, and have fun with it. Have fun with it. The other thing I would say is, as, especially because I know some of you are younger alumni, um, as you get into you having your own apartments or your, you know, start living with a significant other or whatever, make sure that you do a really good job in having alcohol on hand. And, you know, you may not use it all the time, but you should always have a bottle of vodka, uh, rum. Um, you could also have um, a different style of brown liquor as well. Uh, just make sure that you have enough variety so that when you have someone that pops over or you're having company, you can go to a million different things, okay? Now, the last thing that we're going to make, and I'm going to take my time with this, this is uh, a really a classic. Um, and this is, um, we're going to make a uh, Cosmopolitan. Now, Cosmopolitan is one of the most famous martinis. Everybody loves them. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is we're gonna, uh, a little trick. And when you serve a cosmopolitan, especially in the evening, um, you want to use a martini glass or use a martini glass here. You want to fill the glass up with ice, all right? And then you want to put water in it, okay? And you're going to do this right before you make the drink because what you're going to do is you're going to chill the glass down. And by chilling the glass down, it's going to make the drink a little bit more enjoyable because one thing that you don't have in a martini, unless you have it on the rocks, is ice in your drink. I used to use in the mix, uh, in, the, um, in the shaker, and that's what we're going to do today. All right, so the first thing that we're going to start with here is uh, taking our shaker, and we're going to put ice in here. The more ice, the better in these, but you don't have to fill it all the way up to the top. All right, so we're going to put our ice in here. And then the next thing that we're going to add is we're going to add in uh, vodka. Now, martinis, you can make them strong, you can make them light, however you want to do it. Um, I like martinis to be pretty strong. So I'm going to add uh, about two, two and a half ounces of vodka. 
All right. And yeah, that's my vodka right here. There we go. All right. The next thing that we want to add is because this has a citrusy taste to it, you want to add triple sec. Now, triple sec is a orange liqueur. It has a, a lot of citrus tones. The other thing that you can use if you want to be really fancy is Contro. Contro is a um, derivative of triple sec. It's a lot more concentrated with orange flavor, um, and it's a lot more expensive than triple sec. But you can use uh, triple sec, and that's fine. What you want to do with triple sec uh, is about a half an ounce to an ounce, depending on how much vodka you put in. So I'm going to put about an ounce in. Okay. Now, if you were making or following a recipe online about how to make a traditional triple set, I mean, excuse me, a, triple, uh, a traditional Cosmo, it would say use lime juice. And you're going to use the Rose's lime juice. It's green colored stuff that they sell in the, in the grocery store. But we're going to actually do our own today. Uh, we're going to make our own lime juice. Just like we did before with the um, lemons. First of all, look at the size of this lime. It is about the size of an apple absolutely ginormous so we're going to make our own lime juice we're going to cut a lime in half and then we're going to squeeze it into our um, bowl This is all you need. If you, depending on the size of the lime, if you have really small limes, you're going to want to use two, maybe two and a half. Uh, this lime is actually ginormous. It's huge. So I'm just going to use one lime here, right? And that's going to give me enough. And then, like we did for the last uh, to make the uh, the lemonade, I'm going to take the uh, rind of the lime and I'm going to zest it because I want that lime flavor in here. That's going to add to this. All right. The other thing I'm going to add in here is because we're using orange in the triple sec, I'm going to add a little orange zest as well. This is my trick to making a good cosmopolitan. Because the thing is, you want to know that there's alcohol in there, but you don't want to taste it because then you're just going to get messed up a lot faster which sometimes it's better. All right, so we're gonna mix this together. This is our juice. Okay, the juice that we just made is gonna go into the shaker. And then we're gonna put in about uh, two to four ounces of cranberry juice. And that's gonna give it the red pink color. All right. Make sure your shaker's on, and then you're going to shake this up really good for about 20 seconds or so. All right, nice and cold. You want to shake a uh, martini until you can't hold the shaker anymore. You want to take the martini glass that we had uh, with the water in it, you want to throw that out. Now you have a frosted martini glass. And there is the Cosmo. Perfect pinkish red color. That's the way it's going to look if it's going to be fresh. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a lime wedge. Wedge a lime, you're going to make a B into a lime. Carve it out. And put that right there. And that is uh, probably the best uh, coffee we're going to have. Woohoo! That is ridiculously good. Rob, which one's your favorite? Out of all these? Yeah. Uh, probably uh, the lemonade. I, mm. That but, sounds uh, like I, my favorite. <laughs> I mean, I used to, I mean, I'm, I like some sweeter drinks, but I 
mainly like uh, stuff that doesn't have fruit in it too much. Mm -hmm. But like, depending on what the um, occasion is, I definitely want to grab it. I feel like that lemonade would be perfect to have on the beach. <laughs> oh, this is that. No, this is a summer drink. If you've been on the beach all day and you're looking for that cocktail as soon as you get off, this is definitely going to make you feel good, and it's going to quench your thirst. Yum. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, you guys can turn your cameras on, unmute yourself, say hi. Yeah, let's see. Oh, Caroline's here. I haven't seen Caroline Balanzano since uh, about 10 years ago, so that's nice that she's <laughs> Kelsey, Julia Romano, she works at Iona. We don't talk to her anymore. <laughs> Everybody's so quiet tonight. Yeah, nobody wants to. If you to. have any questions about drinking, will there be a catalog with all these recipes? <laughs> sure. Hi, Rob. Hey, uh, it's, uh, the Bouchard's checking in from Maine tonight. <laughs> oh, here we go. Making our drinks. <laughs> nice. Yum. I'm going to down. I, I wasn't planning on drinking tonight, even though I made all these drinks, but this uh, cosmopolitan is pretty damn good. <laughs> you made them. You can't let them go to waste. If I drink all three of these, I want to be going to work for the next two weeks. <laughs> Greg. Hi, Rob. How are you doing, Greg? Good. How are you? You look great. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. You look great, too. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Julie, we love you. Julie, we love you. <laughs> My wife said, I guess, yeah, come downstairs. I mean, she can't have a drink. She's pregnant. So she can uh, still I'm come say hi. She's by myself. So, <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, these are really some just easy drinks to do. Um, you know, you can go online, find out most of these recipes, but try to use these recipes because it, gives it a little extra level and it's going to taste a lot better because you're using fresh ingredients. You're not using processed stuff like uh, syrupy um, lime sugar juice that you would buy in the store. So, but it uh, feels much better when you make them yourself with fresh stuff. Oh, cocktails are a lot better when you make them yourself. Yes. Uh, and cocktails are enjoyed when you know someone you know is making them for you. So, and as we're getting into summer season and hopefully that we're not socially distant and we can have people at our homes. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, we can be making these for uh, people in the near future. I agree. Let's, let's hope that happens. All right. All right. Well, Does anybody I mean, else have any last minute questions? Yeah. Come on. What do you got? I just want to say hi. I thank you guys all for taking time tonight to come and join me. I hope you guys had a little fun, got to learn a little something about making drinks. Rob, have you been still going to campus? Yeah, I'm on campus every day. How is campus like? Still quiet? Uh, tell you the truth, the campus has never looked better. <laughs> this is the nicest yeah. the campus has ever looked. They started building the parking garage today. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's going up. They got one wall up already. Wow. So, you know, finally building the parking garage when uh, there's actually nobody on campus to use it. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, That's okay. It'll we'll be nice. When it gets we'll, get, we'll get back there eventually. Yeah, exactly. I, I, campus won't look the same once we all get back. So <laughs> there's actually more squirrels on campus now than there are people. That's when you know there's an issue. Yeah, that's that's a little scary, but. I'm sure I'm sure they're thriving on an empty campus right now. So exactly. Well, I thank you guys for joining. I hope that you. Uh... Oh, who's that? Oh, Julia. Yes, the the rumors did come true. We are building a parking garage. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your night. Stay safe. Cheers, stay everybody. Healthy. Buenos nachos. <laughs> oh, I wish I had some nachos right now. That'd be good. <laughs>